Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Roberts and Wesley. It's uh, always a great joy to be with you all where we have an opportunity to worship together. Those of you who are joining us online, we hope that you will send messages, if you are on Facebook, um, of greeting to one another. For those of you who are here, just some reminders about protocol around COVID. We ask that you keep your masks on the entire time that you are here. Please do not sing. You're welcome to hum, uh, sway, dance, whatever it is. Um, and uh, remember to keep your social distance. So this is not a, a time to gather with one another. Um, greet each other with a wave, I think, is probably the safest thing to do these days. Also, keep your belongings with you at all times. And remember that if you have any cold symptoms of any kind, please stay home for the safety of all people. The offering is not collected in offering plates um, anymore. The offering plates are at the doors as you exit and enter the building. And so if you are able to give, you can drop off your donation there. You can also ask to use our machine. We have a, a tap machine now if, if that's something that would help you. After church, we have a Zoom fellowship time. So we don't gather in Memorial Hall right now, but we do gather on Zoom. So if you would like to join the fellowship hour where we talk about the service and share what we've gleaned from one another, you can email me at karen.bridges at rwuc.org and I will send you the link. And it starts at noon. We um, are putting together a collection of doves that we hope to have displayed about uh, our building. And uh, you will find uh, the template. Um, I noticed that it's on um, between the pews. I don't... Between the aisles. Between the aisles. Is it... It's on the back page. On the back page, and that's the place that you can find that template. And you're welcome to make one, bring it in, drop it off. Um, well, get it to us. And it will become part of our Christmas display. I um, want you to note that Lessons and Carols is, is today at four, and that will be uh, online only. And uh, that uh, Soul Loading is also today at seven. Uh, online only. And just to note that Soul Outing is a safe space for the uh, LGBTQIA2 uh, plus persons and um, their allies and friends, an opportunity to explore spirituality and life questions in a safe place. Christmas Eve will look different this year, and we, we know that the board will be deliberating on Tuesday night just to talk a little bit more about, about Christmas Eve and some of our plans. But regardless, no matter what, we will be live streaming our services. The four o'clock service will be live streamed, and that's for families, children, anyone who likes to have fun and hear the Christmas story in an interesting and fun way, so that'll be at four o'clock. Then we will also live stream our 8 p.m. and 11 p.m. service, which will basically be very similar. Um, all of those services will be recorded, and so if you want to watch them on Christmas Day, you can. If you just visit our website, they'll help you find all of those links, especially even if you missed Lessons and Carols today at 4 o'clock or the Blue Christmas service last Sunday, so that we hope that you will have the opportunity to watch those at your leisure. Um, a note, again, that Nominations is looking for some uh, key leadership folk, and... Uh, those, uh, the positions are uh, the position of the uh, treasurer, the incoming chair of the board, and the board secretary. If, uh, if you have a name, uh, either of yourself or a friend whose shoulder you've already tapped, please uh, make sure they're willing before you put their name forward. Um, if you'd speak to uh, Ron Soans, that would be uh, very, very helpful, thanks. So we do have virtual live streaming during the week with programming for people who would like to join, and it's open to all people. On Monday at noon, you can join Shiloh to talk about affirming ministries and issues that pertain to that or themes and topics. On Monday night, you can join Laura David Foster for our art studio. No experience required. It starts at 7 p.m. till 8.30. On Tuesday, we have our scripture reflections hour, and that's at noon, and this week it will be Laura who is leading that. 
And then on Wednesday, Laura's also doing another art studio at 1.30. On Thursday, there is an affirming coffee hour with Shiloh at 11, and then on Friday at noon, you can join Aaron for the hymn sing. Next Sunday, there will be no kids' church worship, um, mostly because I will be away for a few days, and then, uh, but like I said, join us Christmas Eve at 4.30. If you would like to support the church at no cost to you, you can always purchase grocery cards for all of them that we sell. We get a certain percentage of the sales. Um, if you would like to do that, please contact the facilities manager, Brad Campbell. Um, and indicate how much you would like from which store and then arrange a time to pick that up. We are walking the journey of Advent. Our days of preparing to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Jesus preached and practiced unconditional love. Love of God, love of neighbor, love of friend and love of enemy. And he commanded his followers to love one another as he had loved them. Robertson Wesley United Church is a community walking in the spirit of Christ, the spirit of caring, where we support each other, our community, and our world. And so we sing. on the traditional land of Treaty 6 territory and within the Métis Nation of Alberta Region 4. We gratefully join diverse Indigenous peoples and Métis and have the honor of worshiping God on this land. Come inside to the warmth and stillness of this sacred place and this sacred story. Go within to the warmth and the stillness of God, the warmth and stillness God is birthing in your heart with Jesus' birth. All ages, all stages, wherever you are on the journey of faith, know that you are welcome into this circle of joy that we create this day. printed in your order of service and is printed there uh, to be engaged in responsively. Holy mystery, we gather in the light, hoping for the spirit of the Lord to rest upon us. Open us to an ever deepening understanding of what it means to dwell in the heart of God. And our opening hymn, Come, Thou Long Expected Jesus. Again, a reminder, please, no singing, but hum, dance, whatever form of celebration feels appropriate. Israel's strength and consolation 
The prophet Isaiah today shares a story about how he had been anointed, anointed to go out and share things with the people. And so today I thought on this Sunday of joy, the third Sunday of Advent, that we too could feel that anointing, that we have all been called to help lift some of the sorrow and the weight of what we are living right now. And so the way that the prophet Isaiah suggested was that he would start by bringing comfort to those who mourn. I think we all know that the usual ways aren't as easy anymore, aren't appropriate anymore, um, just to keep each other safe. But there's still other ways that we can share comfort with one another. Um, and I can share a story that this morning I got the most amazing video message um, just to sharing encouragement and, and joy with me uh, and hopes for the coming season. And it, it just, just that voice uh, made all the difference um, in a time where we are grieving so much loss. The other way we can do this, and I, I was, <laughs> they talk about putting a garland around people's necks instead of ashes. And I was thinking about Hawaii, which is where I would normally be at this time of year, and thinking about how when you get there, you're often greeted with a garland of flowers um, as a, a sign of welcome, hospitality, joy. I mean, to smell those flowers all around your neck is just a wonderful thing. So knowing that a delivery of flowers could make somebody's day, but to know that we don't need to hold on to the ashes, but to bring the beauty and color that we can. And for those of you who are allergic to flowers, I don't know if you've seen the, the Christmas light garland. Maybe try one of those and light up somebody's world. Another way that is traditionally something that we would do at the church is through the anointing of oil. So I want to do this with all of you now as a, a way of sharing some joy with you. I want you to imagine that in your hands there is the oil and love of God. And that as it is lifted up and poured onto your head, down to your shoulders, and then back out. Feel God's love pouring over you bringing you strength, courage, and love. I trust that God is with us all, no matter where we are, no matter how far away we are from one another, but that God's love will continue on if you are also messengers of the hope, peace, joy, and love of this season. So remember to just affirm people out in the world, tell them why you love them, tell them why you care about them, tell them why they're important to you. When we share those messages, we will feel the joy of Christmas. Today we are going to relight the candles, candles of hope and peace as we continue our Advent journey. Our time of eager anticipation continues. Our time of waiting, waiting on the arrival of the one who will turn the world upside down. We open ourselves to the divine dance of joy as we pray. Tender God who calls us to the action of justice and right relationships, we light this next candle, the candle of joy.
The first reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 6. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has appointed me. God has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display God's glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense and who will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For God has clothed me with the garments of salvation. God has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks themselves with a garland and a bride adorns, adorns themselves with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will call, cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The Gospel reading is from the book of John, chapter 1. God, John testifies to the light. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God for Christ the Word made flesh.
Thank you to the handbells uh, for this morning. That was um, that's one of those things that we expect to hear at Christmas, isn't it? We just want to we want to hear the familiar. This morning's scripture speaks of um, there's a little piece in there that has huge meaning. Let me put it that way. That little piece is the words, the acceptable year of the Lord. The acceptable year of the Lord. It's not very long. It's easy to overlook. We could jump right past that phrase. But it has huge, huge meaning. And Isaiah basically spells out, at least to some degree, what those words mean. God has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners and in this translation, it says to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. The year of the Lord's favor, the acceptable year of the Lord, has oft been known by something else. The year of Jubilee. And while we might have difficulty thinking about celebrating joy on a day like today in the midst of all that we are living in, the year of Jubilee was intended at least for the oppressed, the brokenhearted, the captives. To be a year of great joy. The year of Jubilee was established, and I want to be quick to say never adhered to, as the year in which we would ensure equality. It was the year where those who had much would redistribute all of that so that those who had little would have enough. It was, in fact, originally intended to be the year in which property was returned to its original owner. Oh, that's tough. Hmm. I mean, some of us would say, well, we don't even know who the original owner was. Sure we do. We celebrate on the lands of Treaty 6. Métis Nation number or we know to whom this land belongs. We don't want to acknowledge it, maybe. Or we're good to acknowledge it Sunday morning during worship when it feels safe somehow. 
but to think of the year of the Lord's favor, to think of the behavior of Christian folk, to be the returning of the land to its original owner is nothing short of terrifying to us. And yet it's a time of joy. It's a time of joy really because it forces us to a position of acknowledging and recognizing how each of us is in fact truly a child of God. It's not just something we say. Truly, the people who were the First Nations on this land are our brothers and sisters, and we theirs. And that, my friends, can in fact be a reason for great joy. Now, if we spin the wheels ahead about um, six, oh, probably closer to 700 years between Isaiah and Jesus, Jesus begins his ministry with these very words. Just as we now turn to old scriptures, ancient texts, to give us a grounding in what we might do, Jesus also turned to the ancient texts of his religious beliefs and looked to them and said, this is what God has called us to. And really what God's called us to is kind of upsetting the apple cart, isn't it? So in the midst of this time, when it feels to us like everything is distant and hard and we just want it to be over, there is, in fact, the word that points us beyond this building, beyond these streets, beyond our own time even, into a time where we take the light, the knowledge, the wisdom, the commitment, the faith that we have been given here, and we share it there. And sometimes I've noticed we really need to be forced out of the building before we get that this is not the church we are. You remember the we were kids. I can't even do it anymore. I can't remember how my hands are supposed to go. Oh, yeah, yeah, there we go. And then, right. Hope everybody got that. The people. It's the people that matter. And it doesn't matter so much how we spread the light as that we spread the light. We may have to find new ways from the time of Isaiah whereby we share the joy of that which is equality. But it is up to us indeed to find ways to ensure the acceptable year 
to ensure the year of God's favor, to ensure the light, not darkness, but light is what is prevalent in our world. And so may you experience God bless, God's blessing in this time, but may you particularly experience God's blessing remembering that we are a people even outside these walls. And our ministry doesn't change. It remains the same. To bring good news to the oppressed. To bind up the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives, to release the prisoners, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Amen.
recouvrement de la vie aux aveugles. Prendre la liberté aux opprimés. Proclamer une année de grâce de Friends, let's join together in prayer. Let us pray. Advent God, we continue to live in darkness. We wait, we prepare, and we anticipate your coming. With praise and thanksgiving, you bring us your light in Jesus. Shine on us with Jesus' glorious light, that we may show forth your faithfulness through all the world. Give us courage to shine your light for others, pushing aside the darkness that surrounds them, answering your call to live in ministry out in the world. We pray for this congregation and the church and all who proclaim your good news. Advent God, the world is waiting. We pray for people and leaders of every nation. We pray for those who have been forced out of their homes by poverty, by brutality, by fear, by war, and by oppression. May you transform us all through your grace, and may you lift up those amongst us who are in need of healing. Healing through peace, for you are the Prince of Peace, healing through solidarity, for you are God with us, healing through the Valley of Shadows, for you are the Good Shepherd. We pray for those who fill our hearts this day. Advent God, sometimes we feel helpless and insignificant, and we wonder what we can do. How can we change the world? How can we speak and find words for those who are oppressed? Advent God, we are beginning to understand. You give us an infant dependent upon his mother for everything. You call us to be like Jesus, dependent upon you. So we pray for the courage to accept your transforming power, to live as Jesus lived in you. God, there are so many in our midst right now who seek prayer, who seek strength, encouragement, healing, and love. We pray today for Agnes, for Linda, Tim, Donna, for Sam and June, Vicki and Shirley, for Madeline and Betty, George and Lois, Bob and Deborah, for Richard and Cindy, and all the people and places we share with you in the silence of our hearts now. May we pray with hope like Mary does, and may your name be holy. May the hungry be filled, may the proud be scattered, and may the oppressed be lifted up. May your love be ever with us all as we proclaim the year of God. We do so using a paraphrase of the words that Jesus taught us to say. Eternal spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and that shall be, creator and parent of us all, Loving God in whom is heaven, 
the hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb today, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. So we have heard the word of God. We have taken time to reflect on that and discern what messages God has for us today. And we hope that these messages will inspire all of us to give what we can in this world. So in this time, as we prepare for our offering, let us offer to God at the table all that we are, all that we have, and let's make this world a better place knowing that each of us give in different ways, whether it's through sharing of our time, sharing of the gifts that we have been given, or through our treasure as well. Let us take a moment to offer to God ourselves. as part of preparing our hearts and lives for your coming once again. May they be used to prepare the way for your coming into our world. Amen. So let's join together with joy and sing a song that I'm sure we all know. I invite you to get your little lights out as we let them shine around the world.
And so, may the candles of hope, peace, and joy burn brightly in our hearts, preparing the way for the Christ child. And may the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.